Hi guys! Welcome back to The Dog That Saved Me. Today I'm going to be telling you guys how to pick out a service dog puppy. There are three main steps in picking out a service dog puppy. And really these steps can be used for any puppy selection um, in general. So the first one is do your breed research. You'll need to know what breed you want before you go looking. And if you're not sure where to start, there are four um, breeds that have the highest success rate and they're called the Fab Four. And those are Labs, Golden Retrievers, Poodles, and um, Collies. And that can be Rough Coat or Smooth Coat, not Border Collie. They have too high of a herding drive, typically, to do service dog work. <clears throat> and the, like I said, those four have the highest success rate. But you also need to note that each dog has their own temperament and personality, and having them temperament tested is going to be huge. So you want to put a pin in that for later because we'll come back to that soon. The second step is searching for a breeder. And there's certain things you want to look for when you're breeder searching. Um, you want to make sure they have purebred and registered dogs. And I say purebred because when you do mixed breeds then you're not really sure what you're getting because you could get temperaments from either one or traits from either one physical or personality. The next thing you want to make sure is that your breeder is doing health testing on their dogs to make sure that their dogs have the highest health standards and that they're not breeding dogs with genetic disorders. You also want to see if the parent dogs have earned any titles in any type of competitions, shows, events. Um, for example, Remus here, his dad is a champion show dog he also has grandparents who are champion show dogs as well. And that just means that they have the highest standard quality of the breed bred in them already. So the next thing is, does the breeder know their puppies? Do they know which puppies are more dominant, which puppies are more submissive, which puppies have higher energy, lower energy? These are all things that are important. If the breeder doesn't know that about their puppies, then they probably don't know their dogs very well. Also, you want to know if the breeder has a health guarantee. If they're not going to guarantee the health of their puppies, then that probably means they're not breeding the highest quality dog. And when you're looking for a service dog, you want to make sure your dog's going to be high quality and that they're going to be around and that they have every opportunity to succeed. Are the puppies socialized? That's something to look for, for in a breeder. Does the breeder just have a whole bunch of kennels where the puppies are just left there with their parent dogs or by themselves? Are they actively engaging with these puppies? Are they holding them, picking them up, exposing them to different situations, different animals, different people? Are the puppies socialized? That's really huge. You also want to look for a breeder that raises their puppies in their home. That means these are part of a family and it's really important that these dogs know what it's like to be a part of a family and be a part of a unit and to be in a home. A question you'll want to ask your breeder is what is the wait list time on puppies? How often do they breed their dogs? And what will the process be for you to try and find a puppy with them? You also want to ask the breeder the temperaments of their adult dogs that they breed. Which dogs have the best temperaments and what dogs will be the best for service dog work? You also want a breeder that's going to work with you and look looking for the best prospect for you because if they just say pick out a puppy anyone you want is probably not the best idea. You need to communicate with that breeder and say, look, this is what I'm looking for. Do you have any puppies that fit that at this time? So once you find a breeder or even multiple breeders, then it'll be time to select a puppy. This process can take a long time or it can happen in the first litter that you have. You just need to know exactly what you're looking for. And this is where communication with the breeder is really important because if they don't have any puppies in their litter that have these qualities, then it'll probably be better to wait for another litter or communicate with another breeder who might. So once you 
go to meet the puppies, you'll want the breeder to have the puppies that have some of the traits that you're looking for, have them all together. And your first encounter with the puppies, well, you'll want them to be all together and see how they react to you the very first time they see you. If the puppy runs up to you, is really excited, and then leaves right away, that's probably not the puppy for you. If the puppy doesn't even acknowledge your existence, again, not the puppy for you. You want a puppy that might take their time coming up to you, but they come up to you, they hang out with you, and they want to be around you. They even could cuddle up in your lap. That's the puppy you're looking for. You want a puppy that's just going to cuddle with you, just like Remus is with me right now. The rest of these tests that you're going to do are going to be done individually with each puppy that passes the first part. And again, there could be multiple puppies that pass the first part. When I went looking for Remus, there were three puppies that the breeder and I communicated with that would qualify for this testing. And so I had all three of them and so then I did these tests with them individually. And the first one is being held. You need to pick them up and just hold them. It's also good to try and hold them on their back. And Remus is getting kind of big to do this, but he loves it. Are they, accept are they accepting of being held? Again, if they're fighting you and trying to get away from you, it's probably a puppy you want to eliminate. Now it might take them a second to settle, but once they're settled, they're content, that's a good first sign and that puppy is okay to go on to the next test. The next test you do is the startle test. You'll want to drop something that's loud, make a loud noise, and see how they react to that. Again, startling is okay, but it's how they react to the startling. Do they startle and then they're back at playing and doing whatever, or are they still scared and trying to hide? The next test is the follow test. You want to set the puppy on the floor walk away from them and try and encourage them to come to you. If they act aggressively towards you, if they run away, if they completely ignore you, that puppy needs to be eliminated. You want a puppy that's going to follow you and who's going to listen to you and try and have that relationship and bond with you. The next test is the forgiveness test. What you'll do is you'll take the puppy's toes and I'll show it here on Ramus's back toes and you're going to pinch in between their toes. Again, it doesn't hurt them, but it's kind of annoying, and you want to see how they react to that. Are they okay with it and just relax, or are they running away from you, growling at you, afraid of you? If they still want to be with you, that's a puppy that's good to go to the next test. Otherwise, that puppy probably needs to be eliminated. And for the last test, you want to make sure it's been an hour or two since the puppies have eaten to do this one. Um, this is the willingness to work test. You'll want to take a bowl or something that you can hide some, some of their food or treats under. You want to hide those treats under the bowl. Make sure the puppy sees you do that so they know they're there. And see how long it takes them to work at it. Do they completely ignore the fact that there's food under that bowl? Do they try and work at it for a minute and give up? Or do they continually work at it until they get the treats out? You're going to want the puppy that works at it until they get the treats out. The other two again, need to be eliminated. So you can see why this testing process can take a while and why it could happen in the first litter or could not. I got really lucky with Remus's litter. It was between him and one of his brothers. They both tested really, really well on all of the tests. And so it just came down to which one I had a better connection with. And that was Remus and Remus came home with me. The next thing is also you want to make sure you get on bonding and training them immediately. Now when I say training them, it doesn't have to be intensive training. A couple of minutes of getting them to follow, like you have treats in your hand and you follow them, try and get them to sit. But having that connection right away is really, really important. And so those are the steps that you need to follow to pick out a service dog puppy or really any dog. Like if you want a really even laid back dog that's going to follow you and be well rounded, this is probably the test you need to do. Anyways, that's all I got for today. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.